and I met over the internet as so many, uh, Facebook more specifically, and uh, at an Opera America uh, panel discussion, we, we met in person for the first time here in New York, and we went and got some fish and chips at a local pub and, and started talking about this collaboration, which was a, a fortune, uh, fortunate thing for me to do. And so uh, Yeri came to Zaget in Hungary. We had a second meeting and talked about this, and, and things looked fine, so we went ahead and, and planned to do this. And uh, Melina, you know, she is, uh, I understand, a rock star in the Czech Republic. But that's not true. No, I, that's not that's a rock star. But, but you've been here now and at Columbia for how long? Uh, well, at Columbia for 35 years, but I've been in the United States for 53. 53 years, so. So who am so, I? So, so <laughs> you know, ask Franz. That's right. Uh, so Yuri, as you wrote this piece, uh, how did it come about for you? What was your initial inspiration? Well, uh, I was really trying to, to find a, a subject for a new opera. It's my second opera. And so when Milena showed up and presented uh, this incredibly rich uh, and strong and appealing subject, I, I just grabbed it and I, 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 I was really amazed by also by a short excerpt which uh, Milena showed me. At that time, it was the last scene the first of the first act. Uh, and I really loved that uh, poetry. Uh, it, was, it was almost like poetry about this excerpt. And it was very dramatic, too. And uh, it really called for uh, doing something musical about it. I, I wasn't really sure what, what exactly uh, I was going to do. but. Uh, in, in some time, we, we kept working, and suddenly the whole libretto uh, appeared. And, and did you know Melina before, the, before this? <laughs> no, actually. And we met here in New York. It's so, you know, That's how it happened. Kafka is yes. sort of, you know. Also, the, the whole, actually, the whole um, occasion was quite uh, funny, no? Funny, yeah. <laughs> and, and Lynn, I know you're a famous playwright and, and author, but this is your first opera, I understand. That is my first opera. And the reason for it was I was thinking about writing another play about Otla. And I, I read a lot of books, and then I thought, why not all the women? And then I thought, why not them singing? And that's how it started. So I, I am, you know, I, I decided to do it. Because I had a little bit of experience in writing for theater, I thought it couldn't be that different. So that was my reason. Okay. And, and so, Yuri, can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to hear tonight? Oh, uh, so tonight it's not going to be the whole opera. That, that's something which, was, which hasn't been composed yet. So um, <laughs> it's just a beginning, ending, and four uh, areas, actually, each. Uh, each woman uh, has its area. That's what, what you are gonna hear today. And uh, actually, based on this show, I would like to uh, look for uh, some opportunity, commission, or support for finishing the, the whole opera, which is gonna be for a huge, uh, you know, uh, it's just full orchestra and, and full choir and seven singers. So not just because I'm that, you know, I have such a ambitions, uh, but the libretto really feels like there should be a lot of people on stage, and uh, it's not just about those four women, uh, but also about uh, historical uh, circumstances, you know, social uh, circumstances, it's about the, there is a lot of, uh, well, there is a lot of subject, uh, the beginning century, beginning of 20th century in Prague, uh, with all those Maybe you should talk about this. <laughs> Tensions between uh, German, Czech, and Jewish. Uh, and also then we jump to the future. Uh, and we have first, first uh, World War and the second one. So it really calls for uh, big orchestra and chorus. Yeah. And two, sorry, two hours, the duration of two hours. This is, this is approximately this piece is approximately a third of the whole opera. So if we have any potential donors in the audience, I'm always available for, 
for a uh, meeting. So we hope we hope we can make this a possibility. Uh, you know, when, when we do a new opera, when we produce a new opera, it's 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 always time for the as we say the architect to turn it over to the contractors, and that's why we have Sarah and Heidi Lauren here for. So, so Sarah, what impressed you about this music? I really like the music. Um, it's beautiful. Yudi has based the whole thing on various modes, which he has graphed out in incredible uh, you know, distinctness. And what's amazing to me is that as we've been rehearsing the piece, I mean, not to make any comparisons, but like Messiaen's music, you can start to recognize these modes. They're complex chords, but you know they make sense. And, um, yeah, yes, we have some um, slides of the, the composition oh. research that you did. Um, and, and of course, you could speak more about it than I could, but I just wanted to know mm -hmm. yeah. So, Sarah, I know you've conducted uh, American operas and, and uh, operas from Europeans of a distant past. Is this your first work of a contemporary European? This is my first Czech opera, that's for sure. Czech American? Czech American, yeah. Yeah, I have to think about it. Yes. So, Heidi Lauren, how did you approach the staging of this? Um, well, of course, the. Um, the, just like what Yudi said, the, the characters and the um, era of time in the, in the early 20th century is so fascinating um, that, uh, that I was immediately drawn to it. And then I read all of uh, Milena's beautiful libretto. And just like Yudi said, it goes into the history of Prague then in, you know, in World War I, World War II, um, and the culture that was going on there. Uh, there were there was tango music. There was there were parades. There were soldiers. There were fights in the street, you know, over potatoes or whatever whatever they like to fight about, you know, um, for fun. And you know, there are all sorts of um, interesting things in the libretto. And um, and I really think that it it uh, you know one of the first things you learn about theater is it's about relationships. And and in this piece, the relationships between Kafka and each of the four women. Um, which I'll just say really briefly, and we have some slides and photographs of these wonderful people, and Milena can speak about them much more than I can, but um, just briefly, Otla, uh, who Milena mentioned, Kafka's sister, and perhaps favorite sister, and secondly, uh, Felice, who was his fiance, and um, thirdly, uh, Milena, uh, his, a journalist who loved his writings and wanted to translate them, and they, got, they had a relationship via letters, and uh, fourthly, Dora, who he was with when he died. And um, the relationships with them, and then also with Max uh, Brot, who was a writer who had a long friendship, was in school with Kafka, and before Kafka died, he wanted him to, he told him to burn everything that hadn't been published, and he refused to do that, and, and literally smuggled a suitcase, of, a suitcase of Kafka's works out of, everything that was happening in World War II out of the country, and because of that suitcase that he smuggled, we, we have the, the body of literature of Kafka's that we have today. And so Max is one of the characters that you'll see as well. Jim, I have yeah. only two very short sentences. Yes. I think the crucial thing that was left out from the description about the excerpts is that you will, hear, you will see a jump. You will see counting rhymes between the women, and they assume the identity of these separate women. And the arias that you will hear are really the last aria of the whole opera. So there is a kind of a jump from the beginning toward the ending. So what you hear is the summary of their, actually it's a vision of their future, because they are just facing the future, and what is going to happen to them. So that's one. Yeah, that's Second, I felt somehow very important that I tie it to today and that I start with contemporary Prague and tourists and the fun that we had about Kafka's heads and so forth. And that what I wanted to say is that it's very hard to read the past. It's very hard to inhabit the past. And what the tourists, the four women do, they assume the identity and then they become the women, and they carry us through the story. So that, that's what. Thank you. Could you say a, a bit about the four characters that we're going to hear about tonight? I think she described them. I mean, Otla was unbelievably 
He sometimes calls her the dove that carried him on his, on his wing, on her wings. She was very protective. She was very gentle. There was a strange um, closeness between them. There was almost sexual, but you know, not not sexual really. But they were very comfortable with each other. And Kafka once said, "You know, I wish Otla could have been my mother because she was non-judgmental, loving." and didn't distress him, so there was one. Felice was- I'm sorry, do you want to, I want to show okay. them a picture of Otla. Could you go back to the Otla picture? Thank you so much, Gwen. And then we'll talk about Felice. And after I, I should really say she died in Auschwitz. She, she was shipped from Terezin to Auschwitz and died with um, children that she took care of in the transport. Um, Felice was, a, a real mystery because she seemed like an ordinary woman, not terribly handsome, but Kafka took her as his muse, really. Mm -hmm. And that's when he became engaged to her. He all of a sudden started writing. It was just an enormous spurt of creativity. So, and, and he wrote, you know, that many letters. I mean, it's a huge book of letters. And it's, I think, the 20th century most interesting love, love novel, really, because it was so funny and so impossible and so complicated. So that's Felice. And Felice was really quite a remarkable woman, and I would like to do, the just, do justice to her. Anyway. Milena was, um, was very courageous, was, didn't know any fear um, after her, and, gave people a lot of trouble through her life. But after Kafka, she was one of the first ones that wrote about the, her, her talk after Kafka's death, or her article after Kafka's death was just unbelievable. She really saw the importance of his writing. So she was one of the first ones that really, besides Max Brod, that really saw what it was. And later on in her life, she helped Jews escape from, uh, from the occupied Czechoslovakia and died a real heroine death. And on June 13 this year, there was a stone put in front of the house that she was taken from to, to go to concentration camp. They are the stones that are kind of stumbling stones that are done in look like Gold and 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 there is a there is a name of people who were taken from those houses. So there are these stones in Prague. There are these stones all over, and they gave one to Milena because she was one of the courageous people who, who took people out. And Dora is a you know that's one of these dreams of every man in this in this. <laughs> Dora was. 20 years younger and was pliable, lovely, loved him, and cared for him till he died. Very nice. Thank you. And then Max. Uh, that's a picture of Max when he was in school with Kafka, and I love how Kafka looks like such a dark, brooding figure there. <laughs> well, thanks very much for this, and I appreciate your insight and discussion. Should we discussion. Yes, I'm fine. Uh, just a few announcements. The, the role of the guide is going to be presented by Scott McLeod tonight, and Peter Fokovich will be on the piano tonight. Uh, a few other things. Uh, thanks very much to the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation for making this development series possible. We just received another $100,000 grant from them for, to carry this on for another three years, so we're very thankful for that. And also, there's going to be some wine. Uh, not very expensive, but there'll be some wine uh, following this, and I hope you have a chance to meet the casting creative team. And, and talk to them and give them your feedback on what you see tonight. And finally, there's going to be an online survey that you could access through our website, www.centerforcityopera.org, and give us your input on this opera, which is a very important part of the process. And we hope you will take advantage of that, and, and that will be up in the next day or so. So thanks very much. I appreciate you coming. I hope you enjoyed the performance.
Thank you. 